All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Misha Rubin, who is in Westchester, New York. How are you doing, Misha? Great, John. Very excited to be on your podcast. Excellent, excellent. And Misha was a partner at a big four management consulting firm and managed over $100 million in worth of projects, navigated dozens of corporate cultures, advised hundreds of clients and guided hundreds of careers. And now you guide other careers. And what we are going to do now is talk about career transformation how to find meaningful and fulfilling careers at times of change. Okay, so Misha, let's face it, we've been through a lot of changes of late, you know, um, and uh, it has impacted people in, in many different ways. Uh, but in some ways, um, people may have lost jobs or maybe the, the industries they're in have, aren't doing so well, or they maybe they're looking for a, a career change. But how do you how do you find something that's meaningful and fulfilling? Because most people, I think, sort of get not desperate, but they they want to grab a job that's secure and the kind of fulfilling and passion piece comes later. Right. So I find this uh, paradox in our society where we are educated from our childhood on so many topics right? We study mathematics and writing and reading and biology, and then we go through college, and then we, we become very specialized in particular topics. But nobody really ever teaches us how to look for a meaningful, fulfilling career. I actually remember that, actually not remember, but I wish when I was even graduating from college, I wish somebody said, Misha, just pause for a few minutes. Like, why are you going to take this job? What are other opportunities? Like how you, what is the criteria that you're using to evaluate the opportunities that come your way? So I think a lot of people make their choices without being educated on the topic that there is actually a very specific and clear ways to understand who you are and actually use it as a guidance to look for and uh, do uh, meaningful, fulfilling work that works for your life. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, a lot of people, you know, either come out of college or, or, or you know, they, they grab a job because they need a job and not always, uh, you know, they may have studied something, not always grab it in the area that they're in and often default into a, a career. And sometimes then it's either fulfilling the expectations of others or just, well, I, I fell into this, I might as well give it a go. But, but I don't think a lot of people spend a lot of time thinking deeply about you know, their career choices or what else they could be doing. Yes, well, I think that the first job is very often where we make a mistake. Or, or at least if there is something that's aligned with who we are and then we have some type of a goal. And maybe, you know, I also, when I was going, when I was in my 20s, I wasn't thinking about meaningful and fulfilling it being something that's important to me, right? So now I, you know, over years, I, I became to think about that. But usually it's the very first job that we take that takes you in particular direction. And what I call a lot of people get stuck in skills and an experience trap. Because starting with the first job or even sometimes with a major we choose, the more skills and experience we get in one particular area, the more we vested into it. So mm -hmm. the trap is when we think about our next job or next career, we start with our skills and experience. And if skills and experience, that's something that haven't brought us meaning and fulfillment, it's likely that it's not going to. So it's not a great starting point. Skills and experience are very important. But if you look at skills, skills are like clothes. They get out of date and mm -hmm. they get worn out. And in our world that we're living in, you always need new skills. So if you need a new skills like clothes, you can go to a store and, and buy yourself a whole new wardrobe. And, and, and to be operational in current society, you have to do that one way or another experiences on the other hand are very important but they are much more transferable that we give them credit for but skills and experience as, as a starting point for your career search is unlikely will get you to the place where we want to be because if it could it would have already 
Yeah, no, and absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, and I think that's why your people default into careers, because, yeah, you build up some experience and you build up uh, some skills over time and you just think, well, this is me now. But you have you have a method, right, for how to discover meaningful, fulfilling careers that will work for you. Yes, I do. So let me tell you. So usually the people that I work with, I call that person a competent unfulfilled professional. So that's somebody who is educated enough, intelligent enough, good at what they do enough, make money enough, they kind of enough of everything. And they know that their work is just not it. They don't experience meaning and fulfillment in their work. So and my mission in life is to fill the world with impactful, in, empowered people. So this is like, this is how I see that though. That's the type of a person empowered and impactful person that makes the type of difference that they know they could and should be making in the world. They doing work that's aligned with their values and with their mission. They setting an amazing example for their kids or the next generation that's coming way to how to live a meaningful and fulfilling life. So basically that's really what I, I'm committed to, to bring into the world. So I developed the career leap method specifically to do that. And my method starts with really awareness because a lot of, a lot of these answers about what is right for me, what would be meaningful for me, it starts with knowing yourself. So there are several parts to awareness. Uh, one of them is a lot of people have just disempowering beliefs about themselves, right. about their skills, about, about the world, about others. So that's one of the facets that I mm -hmm. work with people. Yeah, no, because I was saying that that's fascinating because I do think people uh, set artificial ceilings for themselves and sort of go, this is as far as I can go, or, or my skill set, I could never do that, or I could never do this. And you're right. I mean, there's a lot of limiting beliefs that if we dig into them, um, we realize either they're without foundation or they come from somewhere else. Absolutely. So the big premise of the career method is two things. Where you work should be aligned with your values. That's the biggest principle. So where would be the industry, the organization, the leaders. So if you are currently working, if you are currently not being fulfilled at your job, most likely you are working in an organization and industry or with the leaders that are not aligned with your values. And there's it just the gap, that gap will be always glaring. And now what you do should be aligned with your strengths. Mm -hmm. So where you work aligned with your values, what you do aligned with your strengths, that's a premise of the whole method. So once you understand yourself, what are your career values? What are your strengths? How are you being motivated? How you interact with people? That creates a, a, a platform of discovering industries, organizations, leaders, careers that would be right for you. Yeah, let's just, uh, just go back to it for a moment to what you mentioned there about aligned with your values. So here's the thing is, I'm not sure everybody has given enough thought to what their values really are. Uh, and I would hope maybe during this, uh, during the time of the pandemic and the lockdown, it's maybe giving people a little bit more time for, for self-reflection. But I think as a starting point, I think if you asked a, a, a random selection of people, you know, what are your core values and are they aligned? Is your company aligned with it? They would, they could maybe tell you what their company values are, but they might struggle with telling you what their own is. Yeah, most likely. It's very often uh, that happens. It's part of my work is that people know who they are. That's where awareness is. It's not just, we listen, the, our values shouldn't be surprised for us. When people discover their values, it's actually an extraordinary joy for me when people, it, it, it never some amazing surprise for them, but because there was values already guiding you. But for some people, that compass of values is very strong and they pick the right careers. For others, like me personally, my, my, career values compass was just saying, mm, no, this is not it. And this is not it. So it took me a while to actually put my values into words. And for humans, everything that doesn't exist in language, is very hard to apply. Mm -hmm. So my career values are making a difference, clarity and manifestation. Those right. are my values. They propagate through my life. They propagate through the work that I'm currently I'm doing. And, you know, it, it's great to know them and it's great to do the work that's aligned with them. Yeah, so uh, 
so when you when you work with people and okay and you get the, you uncover their their core values and that there's also I, I think people are often very reluctant to to make changes because we don't like change really even though change is constant in every aspect of our life we try to avoid it as much as possible uh and i think sometimes people are reluctant to to take a leap to to make a change because maybe as i said before maybe there's expectations of others maybe you know they have a family whatever they're yeah. they're nervous about doing anything that could uh you know have a negative impact even in the short term on on where they are yeah it's very common so this is the this is what i'm confronting there is a particular belief in our society that's doing meaningful and fulfilling job is a fantasy people don't know what that work would be and if they if they think even if they knew what it was they wouldn't be able to to make money so they they left with why i would even bother so that's a very very common belief that people dismantle but what i what you know the first step for 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 take a competent unfulfilled professional and in for them to move to the an empowered impactful human the first step is for people to confront their career mediocrity and i can share with you a story about me yeah please please because that's there was like a particular moment for me when i was i remember it was i was sitting in a meeting it was like a real meeting before pandemic and quarantine mm-hmm. where i was in a meeting room with walls and boards mm-hmm. and people writing with markers and people are talking and at that time i spent about 15 years in a big four consulting firm i was a partner i was making more money than as an immigrant when i was arriving to the united states i could have imagined i had recognition i have everything that i wanted and i and, and as i was sitting at that meeting and we were discussing the next service offering for our clients and our clients are large banks yeah. right and i heard people were talking there were opinions and then i hear myself speak and as i hear the words coming out of my by- mouth i also hear the little voice a very quiet little voice telling me this is not aligned with who you are anymore you are not going to do that anymore and that was a moment where i confronted my career mediocrity and that's not a pleasant moment because at that moment you face fear because mm-hmm. i have three children i have a family i'm a breadwinner in my family i didn't have a clear idea of what i would be doing i didn't know that in 6 months i'll come up with a career leap method that i'll start teaching that i'll be here in this podcast mm-hmm. sharing it with others i didn't know any of that but that was a moment where i confronted and it just was very clear to me that no more so you're right so till somebody wakes up to that to that fact it's very hard to do anything but it is scary what we need to acknowledge that it's scary and that there are, but there are answers and there are many people that have done it there is plenty of evidence for that so how do you approach the conversation then with those in your life who are relying on you because i think that's the biggest fear. i mean you may come to a conclusion say okay this isn't really what i want to do i need to do something else maybe even you're figuring it out but say in your case uh, and and i'm sure it's the same for a lot of other people you know you have people relying on you the breadwinner so i guess as part of your process i mean how do you approach that conversation with others so yeah. that it allows you to have the support you need to move forward i love your question so that's you know in my very first session i discussed the rules of engagement and one of them is that your partner but all your partners in life right mm-hmm. whoever relies on you or you rely on them that you need to turn them into your biggest supporters. So that's one of the first. It was very interesting that I was working with one very powerful woman and she said one of her disempowering beliefs was I'm not sure that my husband will support me. And I asked her, did you get a chance to talk to him? She said, well, I hinted him something. Hmm. And then it turned out that she really didn't have a proper conversation with him, but once she did, he actually was her big supporter now i think it's absolutely important to talk to our spouses about our dreams about our aspirations about if we are stuck in our i think that's part of that intimacy and closeness that we have with with these humans that we choose to to partner with right no i i could i couldn't agree more absolutely 
And then how about when, when, okay, so if you make the decision, okay, I'm not doing what I want, I want to find the right thing. Uh, how do you how do you help people identify what that is? Because a lot of times we're fantastic at knowing what we don't want, mm -hmm. but we're not so great at identifying what we actually do want. Great. So I'll, I'll start talk, telling you a little bit about my method. So it starts with knowing yourself, right? So if you know your career values, then you can actually go and look for industries, organizations, and leaders that would be aligned with them. In fact, if you know all these things that, that I talked about, career values, strengths, your the way you're being motivated, and the way you interact with others, it's very easy for you to say yes or no whether it's a right opportunity for you or not. So mm -hmm. in my second phase of my program, which is called discovery, what we do is we look, we explore industries, we explore leaders, we explore organizations, and we come up with a career leap map, which is a list of people, list of ideas of where and what you could be doing. It's actually so exciting because people come up with ideas that they never even imagined. And some of them, they had ideas that were dormant, but they never felt real. Suddenly those were there. Suddenly you have a list of things and then you choose one. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess um, that's the interesting part, isn't it, when you get down to, to choosing one, or in your experience, does one kind of leap out at you at the end once you've gone through this process? Well, I think leap is a choice. I also don't, I don't, I think we have values, our values could change over time, but not that much. Mm -hmm. But our missions in life could be multiples and and change a lot so i don't think there is necessarily one leap per person in fact i don't believe that um the society where we're living now people will just ever have one career i think yeah. what you need to be ready and i think the topic of a criteria of how you pick your career becomes more and more relevant because we know the world is changing is many careers will transform or will disappear or become something else. So it's not like a one time exercise, but what I'm committed to is leading people with tools that they can use this methodology for the rest of their life in their career choices. And I guess the other thing too, is with the world uh, changing and, uh, you know, there's a lot of different, there's a, there's, there's new jobs being created all the time, uh, new, new demands that were never there before skills that are needed. So uh, in, in many ways, you can almost uh, invent a job for yourself if, if you want. Plus, with, uh, with virtual and online, so no longer are you for many roles, no longer are you location tied. Exactly. That's why I think there has never been as interesting time to explore your career because the world has changed significantly in the past year. So I, as businesses and industry change, it's actually very painful for many people, but mm -hmm. with change also, there are many new opportunities. And as you said before, in the past, you were really limited by geography of your location. And now suddenly you could potentially work in so many places and so many organizations are open for you not being there in person. So I think there had never been a more amazing time to reinvent yourself. No, I think 100%. Um, and just uh, bef before we finish, can you just give me, obviously not naming names or anything, but just give me a couple of examples of people you work with and the type of career changes they made? Because I think that would be great for people. I think it would be interesting to hear what they were doing and what they ended up doing. Awesome. So one of my favorite examples, you know, I worked with this woman who came to me and said, I'm an architect. It's impossible to be a woman in architecture. I hate it now. Get me out of here. This is where <laughs> we started. And where we entered during our discovery phase is that she said, now I remember why I picked architecture and I don't want to even explore another industry because she found that within industry, you know, the industry is big, right? Yeah. That within the industry, you can find aspects of industry aspects that actually are very much aligned with your values. So she pursued a number of opportunities in that way. That's excellent. That's a, that's a uh, that's a really good example because I think sometimes you know we get a little absolutist and we go, "This is it. I'm done with this industry. It doesn't work for me." But to your point is there's very few industries now that are that kind of contained because 
number one, they bleed over into other industries or there's always new parts coming up or, or, or parts that are becoming more, um, more significant over time. So I think that's a really interesting concept of, you know, you don't always have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't need to make a dramatic shift. You just may need to shift where you are within that industry. Yeah, exactly. So my great example, I work with a lot of people from Wall Street and in financial industry. And there's a question, do I stay in a financial industry? Because, you know, on the surface, there is a lot of things that are happening in financial industry mm -hmm. that's not aligned with most people's values. But on the other hand, there is a lot of small companies are popping up with innovative ideas that really reinventing what it is to provide financial services that that actually embrace consumer and have a mission for a consumer, not just their own financial gain. So I think it's absolutely, for instance, a place where they're I'm actually saying I would love more people to go and transform that industry, <laughs> people with values that come and go do great things there. So yes, pretty much a lot, any, any industry, but there also could be that this industry not aligned with your values altogether. Yeah. And can I tell you, because of my philosophy of transferabilities, of um, experiences, you can actually, I train people how to communicate and how to create a powerful case for them to go work in other industries. Yeah, so um, before we finish, just give me one dramatic example, if you have, of somebody who went from one industry to a completely different. I'm still working on that one, you oh, know, okay. with, a, with a very dramatic. But I have a few people that, um, the, the one example that, I, that I'm working with somebody that, you know, works in technology in, in, a, in an organization, and um, she actually helped her husband set up his medical practice, right? So she is exploring whether that's what she wants to be doing, helping yeah. doctors and taking out uh, the business side of doctors and um, have them focus on what they really there to do. Um, I have somebody who um, also, an, uh, um, who, who is a woman who took kind of a time off from business world because of um, having kids and taking care of children, mm -hmm. right? So she created her own business at that time. And through all this um, journey, she got very interested in personal finance. So right, right now she is examining job opportunities specifically related to personal finance. And she has actually a very interesting case for that. So yeah, so people find things, they don't necessarily have to be dramatic. And yeah. can I tell you, it's dramatic and not dramatic at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> you well, know, I think it's every, kind of a... every, every change like that is dramatic in its own way. It has certainly dramatic elements uh, to it. But this is great, Misha, um, I, I, such a great interview. And uh, I love this thing, career mediocrity. So if you're out there feeling that uh, you, you are in career mediocrity, um, I would suggest you, you check out uh, Misha. All of Misha's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Sure. You can find me at MishaRubin.com or TheCareerLeap.com. That's the name of my program. Um, I am working with professionals that are looking for what's next. I'm look, working with leaders. It's a little bit of different work with the same assumptions that are maybe grew out of the mission of their organization or looking for what's next. And I'm also look, working with CEOs that um, the Legacy Leap, my program, is about helping them transform their organizations to, be, to become full of meaning and, 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 and fulfillment and, and uh, the, um, work on their mission within their organization. Well, listen, thanks. Thanks again, uh, Misha. And as I said, I mean, we've seen the world can throw curveballs at you uh, and some huge ones like we've seen with the pandemic. So let's face it, our lives are in a, a constant state of flux to some degree. So you might as well, if you're not feeling fulfilled, you might as well start exploring other options and check out the work that people like Misha is, is doing. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.